Hey, what's up? I'm back. Colin Weaver, IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. Two questions each time to help you get ready for your CISSP exam. Here comes question number one. As part of the developments of a new software product that's being built in house, you are completing your work on the system security architecture. My question for you is, which stage of the systems development life cycle are you in? Here comes some answer choices, follow the phases, click pause if you need to, think about it, where would this be occurring? And when you're ready, click play and we will talk it through. All right, you are in phase two of the SDLC, which is the development and acquisition phase. Uh, during this phase, you're going to be doing things like performing risk assessment. You're going to be going in and doing uh, the uh, defining of uh, security controls, things like baseline security controls, tailored specific security controls to this particular situation. Also making sure the security controls that are required by law or regulation are also in place. Other big things that are going on in this phase include the designing and engineering of the security architecture, making sure that security is built into the application from the get-go, not going in and putting security in after the fact. We don't want to develop something, have it basically be ready, only to realize that we need to do things to secure it. Security should be part of the design and the architecture of the system needs to incorporate and account for security throughout, especially in this day and age when we're dealing with so many uh, distributed systems. We have been for years, but you know, with this rise of you know, cloud-based everything and having you know, applications being created from this service over here and this service over here and this service over here, uh, we need to make sure that the design of that from an engineering perspective and from an architecture perspective considers security all the way through. Another big thing going on during this development acquisition phase is the developing of all the security documentation, uh, which is what the answer to this question is. Uh, this is gonna also include not only just going in and making sure that you've got you know, all the security documented for the, for the system, but also going in and making sure that you're giving consideration for and providing some development on things like business impact assessment, uh, going in and looking at incident response planning, contingency planning. Uh, you, this could even include security awareness training, going in and defining that. Uh, making sure that you have, um, uh, it, it never seems to go away. Again, uh, looking at privacy impact assessment. Uh, again, we did that in the initiation phase, but again, it's, it kind of has its life all throughout the system development life cycle. And then really the last major thing that occurs during this phase is uh, to go in and make sure that you do functionality testing and security testing. Uh, you know, of course that stuff has to be done before stuff goes into production. And this is the, the place in the SDLC where that's gonna occur. All right, let's move on to question number two. That question today is, who in your organization is ultimately responsible for accepting the risk associated with operating a system? There's your answer choices. Think about it. When you got the right answer, if you clicked pause, click unpause or go or play or whatever, and uh, we can talk it through. Is it the system owner? No, the system owner is not responsible for accepting the risk. The system owner is responsible for making sure that the stuff gets procured, developed, implemented, and is actually you know, used and maintained and operated in the environment, but the system owner is not responsible for accepting the risk associated with it being in the environment. So not that. Is it the ISSO? No, <laughs> uh, the ISSO's job does not include um, formally accepting the risk associated with uh, a system, uh, the ISSO is gonna make sure that the security of the system is, is, is developed and, and implemented and that there's policy um, you know, to make sure the system's adequately secured. But again, formal acceptance of risk is not the ISSO's job. How about the third choice, software developer? Next choice is the authorizing official. Yes, that's the right answer here. The AO or authorizing official um, is the person who has the authority within the organization to formally accept the risk associated with operating a system in the environment. That is you know, almost textbook definition of what an AO's job is to go in and make that formal acceptance to go in and do that. So that's the answer that we're looking for here. And the last choice on the list would be the CIO. No, it's not the CIO's job uh, by definition to go in and do that. The CIO is gonna be responsible for 
uh, making sure that you know that the budget's there to implement uh, all the information security requirements that it actually is being done that what the organization is complying with any laws or regulations that compel it to behave in a certain way all that stuff is kind of what cios are going to go in and do but uh, in this particular question we were looking for the authorizing official all right two more questions complete i will see you when i'm looking at you bye